In this video, we'll learn about while loops. Loops in programming are really useful because they can be used to save time and achieve things that were before impossible. Remember, we started out writing programs made of simple commands. They would start at the first command, run through them one by one, and be finished when they ran out. Then we introduced conditionals, and our programs could have different outputs and courses of actions depending on conditions. Now, with loops, we can make our programs repeat a set of instructions. There are two types of loops in Python, the while loop and the for loop. Today, we're learning about the basic while loop, and in the next video, we'll take a look at for loops. To write a while loop, first write the keyword while, and then follow that with a condition. For demonstration, I'll just put the value true here as a placeholder. Follow your condition with a colon, just like with if statements. Many times, the colon means start a block of code, so that's what we'll do. Again, the code that we'll repeat must be in a block, so Python knows what is part of the while loop and what is the rest of the program. A block is written with an indent. I'll place a simple print here to show every time the block is repeated. So like I said, a loop simply repeats a set of instructions. But how many times does a loop repeat? And when does a while loop stop? While loops will run as long as the condition they use evaluates to true. Know that it checks the condition before each time the block runs. In this program, the condition is always true, which means the loop will repeat forever. Let's give this a try. As you can see, we have many highs printing out very quickly. I'll stop this with a keyboard interrupt, or you can also trash the terminal window with the trash icon. That was a loop that never ever stops, which is called an infinite loop. Obviously, we want to avoid those, so to do this, the code inside of the repeating block must affect the condition. Here's an example. It prints 0, then 1, then 2, and so on, all the way to 9. Notice how the program did come to a stop, and that's because the condition and the block are dependent. Let's run through this program. First, the variable count is set to zero. Before the while loop runs, it checks if the condition is true. Since zero is less than 10, the block will run. The variable is printed and then increased by one. Then Python checks the condition again to see if it has changed. Now count is equal to one. One is still less than 10, so the block repeats a second time. One is printed out, then it becomes two. It checks if two is still less than 10 and then runs again. This continues for a while. When count is increased from 9 to 10, however, the condition becomes false and the block stops repeating. It finishes the last command of the program, which is a print, and then it comes to a stop. So with most of the while loops you write, you should have the condition depend on the code inside of the block to ensure that no infinite loops happen. Most of the time, that requires you write a variable before the while loop and then change it inside of your code block. However, there is a way to stop a loop without making the condition false. It's called a break statement. In essence, the break statement means stop the loop, now. So you technically can make a loop that stops without a condition depending on your code block. For now, stay away from the break statement, since it can lead to bad practices. There's also a continue statement you can use with loops. That means stop this loop, but continue with the next one. You should also avoid this command when starting out, but you can look it up if you're curious. Now that you have an idea of how while loops work, Let's look at a few examples of how to use them. This program is just like the first, except it counts backwards instead of forwards. The count variable starts at 10 instead of 0, decreases instead of increases, and the loop will run as long as count is bigger than 0. We can also change the rate at which the count variable changes. Instead of subtracting 1 from count, I can subtract by 2 or 3 or 5. Now the program counts down in twos. If I wanted to print out the last number, I can change the condition to greater than or equal to. Just like with if statements, you can also nest loops. Here I have two counting loops. The main loop uses the variable outer count, and the inside loop uses the variable inner count. So what happens when you put repeating code inside of repeating code? Well, you get more repeating. In this specific program, the inner loop will count from 0 to 2 every time the outer loop runs. When I print these, this is the output we end up with. As you can see, the first set of numbers range from 0 to 4, and for each number there's a 0, 1, and 2 to pair with it. Okay, that's neat and all, but why would you ever want to loop code inside of looping code? 
The main idea is that you can use loops to quickly solve problems with patterns. In real life, for example, if you had to alphabetize a set of books, first you might arrange all of them by the first letter, then you might go back and arrange all of the same letter books by their second letter. The outer loop would be sorting by the first letter, and the inner loop would be sorting by the second letter. I can modify this program to show us some timetables. This program is pretty simple. Instead of the condition depending on a number, it depends on user input to come to a stop. Instead of a count variable, we have one called user choice. And inside of the block, we see that it's set to whatever the user types in. The condition checks if the user choice is not yes. In other words, the program won't stop until the user says yes. Let's test this. This program uses a loop to print out items in a list. Here, we have a list and a counting variable starting at zero. For the loop, we keep repeating while count is less than the length of the list. We also increase count by one each time, which makes this really a counting loop underneath. Since the list is five items long, the condition is really while count is less than five, meaning it'll count from zero to four. We then use that number to get a specific item in the list using a bracket selector. Obviously, the first item that we'll print out will be James, since it's at the zero position in the list, then John at position one. Let's see what the output looks like. This is an example of why lists are indexed from zero. That way, we could start counting at zero and finish when count is equal to the length. Now, before you write a million programs going through lists like shown here, this is actually a peek at what for loops do. We'll learn more about looping through lists in the next video. But for now, we can still do the exact same thing using while loops. Here's the structure of a program with a repeating menu. Just like a regular menu program, it prints the options to the user, takes input, and then uses an if statement to run the corresponding code. However, the difference here is that the menu will repeat until the user decides they want to quit. This variable called done is initially set to false. The loop will run while the user is not done. You didn't forget, right? Not means flip the boolean, so true becomes false and false becomes true. Choosing option 4 changes the value of this variable, which makes the condition evaluate to false and causes the loop to come to a stop. Let's test it out. Taking that idea, I've wrapped it up into a program with a real purpose. This program will let the user practice some math problems, and they get to choose which type of problem to solve. Once the user is done with that problem, they can choose the option to quit. I've generated each math problem randomly using the random module. It then takes the user's entered number, checks if it's correct, and then prints the result. Here's the program in action. Notice how the program was designed to make sense. While not done is pretty self-explanatory. Run while the user isn't done. And to stop the program, simply set done equal to true. If you're ever having trouble making sense of your own programs, try to spell things out easier. Loops are a big concept to learn, so take your time and make sure you understand everything. That's all for now. Code Dog out.